All right, uh, in this video on um, using forms to create planner tasks, we're going to talk about setting labels on tasks. And I'll be honest, when I did my initial set of videos on this topic, I kind of ignored labels because I knew they were going to be a bit of a pain to work with um, just because of kind of how labels are structured and, and how they're assigned, etc., and the fact that they are somewhat flexible, which, you know, whenever you have flexibility, then you have potential complications. Uh, so let's just talk first of all about how planner or how labels work in planner, what they look like, what they're for. Uh, so basically when you have a plan in planner you can assign labels to tasks and by default or there are 24 labels that you can choose from and the by default they're named for their color so pink, red, yellow, blue, etc. Um, now, because those colors don't inherently have meaning to most people, you have the ability to rename them. So you can see in the image here that pink was renamed to internal. You simply click the little pencil icon and then you're given the option to change the name. Um, so chances are you're going to choose which labels you want to use and then give them specific names. Um, and you can do that. That's not going to break anything. It's not going to break the form or the flow or anything like that. Uh, but you do just want to make sure well, you don't need to, but it's a good idea to kind of have that established, have that convention set up um, before you build your form that's going to create these tasks, just because you'll want to make sure that things are coordinated so that in your form you're using the same language for the labels as you're using in the plan, since chances are people are going to be interacting with both. Um, now labels are really meant to be sort of these flexible tags where you can use multiple labels for a single task. Uh, so to use the example of if you want to identify what audiences or what groups of people a, sing a single task is going to potentially impact, you might have labels for faculty or students or staff or guest users uh, and in that scenario there might be certain tasks that apply to or will impact all of those audiences so you would select all of them there might be some that are only going to impact students or only faculty etc so the point is that you can assign the task or the, the users creating the, the task can assign whichever labels are relevant to that particular task um, now, the other thing to note is that while there are 24, you don't need to use all 24. Um, unless you're going to be really, really organized in your plan, you probably want to just kind of use a half a dozen or a dozen. Basically, don't go crazy, you know, subdividing or, or creating tags that you're never going to use. So think a little bit, talk to the people who will be using the plan to figure out what tags make sense to them. Uh, especially if those tags are going to drive some further process or, or some other business process. So that's basically what labels look like in Planner and what you use them for. Now in terms of specifying those on a form, the you know whenever you want to give people multiple selections that they can choose from or allow them to select multiple values from a list, a multi-select choice question is really the most efficient way to do that. Um, so that's what we're going to use and I've tried a couple of other ways. I tried you know a Likert scale, a text field, uh, and really the choice question is is the cleanest way to do it. Um, you can use as the choices the colors and, and if you want to keep your life simple, um, then keep the colors in the names or use the colors for the, the choice values and you'll be fine. Uh, but it's also important to note that when you use that multi-select choice question, the data that comes into the flow is a JSON array. So it's an array in JSON format, uh, meaning that in order to properly read that data, you need to use first the JSON expression to convert it or to basically identify to the flow that that is a JSON array. So we'll take a look at that momentarily here. Uh, 
Now, when you get to the, the, the point of actually setting the task labels in the flow, uh, there are only two actions right now. This is being recorded in December of 2022. Um, but at this point in time, there are two actions where you are able to set label values. They are create a task preview. Uh, again, if you're watching this later than December 2022, then it's possible that it's no longer the, a, in preview. It might just be create a task. Uh, but if you see create a task preview, that's the action you want to use. Uh, or to update an existing task, there is an updated task v2 preview so just be sure that you're using one of those basically when you select the action if you don't see pink red yellow green blue purple blah 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 all of those then it's not the right task or it's not the right action so just look for those preview actions or the v2 preview action and you're good to go now within that action each of those color labels has its own field which takes a boolean value meaning if you want to apply the pink label, then you need to put an expression or you need to set a value in that field that equates to true. Now you can hard code a true, but that's going to become a very complicated mess. In other words, you would have a condition or a switch or something um, and it would just be inefficient. So we're going to use an expression. We're going to use the contains expression just because that seems to me to be the most efficient way to do it. Uh, so the contains expression, just to kind of give an overview of the, what that is, uh, basically it is it does a case sensitive check for a string within another string. So the syntax of it is going to be you know, contains and then the string, the kind of the big string, um, and then a comma and then single quotes, the string that you're looking for. So in our case, the it's going to be choice uh, contains JSON choice question response because we need to use that JSON expression to convert that or identify it as a JSON array. And then we're going to look for the value of pink. Um, now, it is important to note that this is where you need to coordinate things because whatever the choice values are on your form, that's the text that you need to put inside those single quotes. So in other words, if you rename pink to something else in the plan, um, if you also rename it in the choice on your form, but you don't rename it inside the flow here, it's going to fail. Uh, so let's just show a demo of this just to kind of illustrate that point. So we have our form here where we were just using asking for a task name, category, and then there are the labels. And again, uh, this kind of spelling out all 24 of these took a bit of time. It was kind of tedious, but as I said before, you don't need to use all 24. If you're for your business purposes, you're only going to use six of these, then you only need to define six of them. You don't need to list all 24 just to, for completeness. In fact, I would not, I would make sure that you don't list any that you're not going to use because it will just confuse people. People will be checking them and wondering why they're not applying to those tasks. Uh, so again, just use the ones you want. Uh, but let's preview this. And I'm going to give this a task name, like we'll just call this a pink task. And it's a management task. And we'll just select pink and submit. And then we'll jump over to our plan here. Let's reload it. And hey, there is our pink task. Easy enough. Uh, so just looking at the flow, and let's check that flow run to see exactly what happened again just to prove my point um, so we got the response details we created the task and then in that pink task it evaluated to true now let's say in our plan here uh, I decide that you know pink I actually want that to be a internal task 
So we're going to rename pink to internal here. Uh, but I'm not going to change it on the form. So I'll leave pink there. And let's fill this out again. And we'll say this is an internal task. Or I'll just say another pink task. And again, that'll be management. And we'll select pink again. But note that the person filling out the form um, doesn't know that pink is internal. So unless you want to provide a table here or something to explain that pink equals internal, it's going to be a little confusing for them. But we'll just assume that they did and we'll click submit and see that the task it creates And we'll reload. Hey, there's another pink task. And now it is labeled as internal because that's the new name for pink. Now, if we want to make our users' lives easier, um, the people who are going to be filling out that form, we want them to see that pink is an internal task. So we don't want to, we don't want to change, you know, we could uh, leave pink, well, we could just simply change this no, uh, sorry, got to go back to the edit field here. Uh, but we could change that from pink to internal. And then preview it. And let's try that again. And we'll say yet another pink. Oh, no, we'll just call this internal task because that's what we did. We changed the name. So this is an internal task. And again, it's management. We'll select internal. Submit and go over to our tasks, reload, and hey, there's internal task, but it didn't apply the label. Why didn't it apply the label? Well, because if I go and look in the run history at that particular run, we will go to the create a task section and see that pink is now coming up as false. Uh, why is that false? Well, it's because the expression here, well, let's like look at the response details. Uh, the labels, the value or the, the data coming into labels is simply the word internal. But in our expression here, the contains expression, it's specifically looking for, let me go over to the end there, pink. So I could change this here to internal. Now let me just make sure that that took. It did. OK. We'll save it and submit the form again. And we'll say another internal task management internal submit and reload again hey magically now we have set that internal task and the reason that it works now is that we updated the you know the basically the string it's looking for in that expression matches the value coming in from the form now if you want to kind of you know, unless you want to maintain a table somewhere or a listing of what those colors equate to because in our flow you'll note this still says pink so how do I know that pink equates to internal um, now, I mean there are ways you can document that here inside the flow you could add a note and inside that note now the problem is that it's a short note so there is a, a limit to the number of characters you can put in here I wouldn't put all 24 colors and what they equate to but if you're using only five or six of them then you could certainly do that uh, or you could keep that documentation somewhere else but to me it's one of those things that it's better to just have it inside of the flow uh, because then if you hand this off to somebody else the documentation that they need to maintain it is there inside of the flow um, now kind of if you didn't want to if you want to make things even easier, um, you would
basically change it to or include in the choices both of those values. So uh, again, if we go back to our edit view of the form here, and in this case, I'm going to say internal and in parentheses, pink, just so that they know that, you know, basically the people filling out the form see, oh, okay, it's an internal task. Um, they can also know that that means it's going to be a pink colored label in planner. It doesn't, you know, that's not super relevant to them, and but it's not unnecessary information. It just might be a little superfluous at the time. Uh, but if we do that uh, and then go back to our flow, and again, we just need to update our contains expression here. So go to the end there and just change that to internal and in parentheses pink. Close parenthesis, update that, save, and then preview our tasks, our uh, form again. And let's say this is an internal slash pink task. And select internal pink, hit submit, and go back to our flow, I'm sorry, our plan reload and hey there is our internal pink task labeled with the internal label which happens to be the color pink uh, and because it matches on the form choices and in the flow expression everyone's happy and it will continue to work that way now obviously that would be a little uh, could be a little troublesome to set up initially um, and again you want to keep keep things in sync so if someone in the you know maybe they decide later that pink is going to mean something else in the plan you'll need to make sure you update the choice in the form and your expression in the flow uh, basically just make sure the values match across the board uh, and that everyone knows or, or you know the people who need to know understand how things relate to one another uh, so that is pretty much it for this was our yeah, so make it easier on your users. If you rename the column or rename the colors to something meaningful like internal, external, audience names, whatever it might be, uh, just know that you keeping the color in that choice value on the form and in the expression, the flow, will make things a little easier for whoever's going to be maintaining this down the road. Not necessity, but that's my recommendation. Um, you can simply, you know, as long as the, the value that you're searching for, the string you're searching for matches the choice on the form, that's all that's really required. But you'll want to just think about usability and make sure that it's going to be meaningful to the people using the form and using the plan. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, if so, great. If you have questions or other video ideas, throw those in the comments below. Uh, and thank you and have a great day.